Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. It is episode 13 on our daily updates with Sridhar Chityala. Sridhar ji, namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskaram and good morning to you and good morning to everybody or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, good morning to you, sir. And we are going to directly take a plunge into our today's revolving events. The first one is the Quad. Uh, lots of developments happening in Quad. Could you please uh, bring us up to date on what is happening in this particular thing, especially with the exercises taking place in Malabar? Right, right. Great. Okay. Um, uh, let's start with uh, Mark Esper's statement in the Atlantic Councils where he said that the Indo-Pacific relationship would be the most pivotal, um, uh, most pivotal in the uh, for the century in terms of security, trade, and and commerce, particularly around the security side, uh, with the common um, a threat of uh, China posing tremendous risks not just to United States and India but to all nations around the neighborhood. So that's a very profound statement as he made his, as he makes his way. Uh, into India next week for the 2 plus 2 dialogue. The fact that the 2 plus 2 dialogue taking place in in person uh, just one week prior to the elections uh, is a telling statement on the importance that the President Trump administration is giving uh, to, to, the, uh, to the nature of dialogue as well as the importance of the dialogue between the two nations. And on top of that, they expect to sign what we call as the uh, Basic uh, Exchange Cooperation Bika, Basic Exchange Cooperation Agreement, where Rajnath Singh, the Defense Minister of India, and Mark Esper will be doing the, 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 the signage. Um, this is cooperation between the two armies, the U.S. Army and Indian Army, from geospatial to logistics. Remember, this comes on the back of the recently concluded uh, Malabar exercise in the Indo-Pacific, where Australia was also invited to play a part. There was some contention before before this formation of the Quad. There was the India, Japan, United States, but then now uh, Australia is very much part of that uh, Quad agreement. So you have a set of activities which is taking place around the Indo-Pacific in concert with the 2 plus 2 dialogue and in person. This is the same sentiment that the Indian Americans have been expressing why uh, a Modi-Trump partnership and why Trump uh, winning the election is important in, from a continuity point of view uh, in terms of the level of comfort factor and the dialogue taking place. Not to be left alone, um, there is also the security cooperation between Japan, which is one of the important Quad members, and Indonesia. This is after Indonesian Defense Minister for the first time having been invited to the United States, he coming and meeting uh, the, the defense secretary as well as the important uh, defense officials in the in United States. Adjacent to that, you also have Vietnam inviting India to, to the virtual ASEAN summit, giving it again the strategic impetus in terms of the role that India needs to play. So in other words, both in a political and a security context, all kind of uh, game plans have been fairly well laid out irrespective of the outcome of the elections in case the intervening period is used by China to, to create any kind of mischief because it's already happening in Taiwan, so, uh, in South China Sea, as well as, of course, in the northern side, the Indian uh, India-China issue in Ladakh. Well, uh, moving on, uh, we are taking a quick look at the effects of virus and when normalcy is expected to return. I'm hearing news from uh, local companies in the Silicon Valley that they don't expect to be back in their campuses uh, before July of next year. So there is a certain concern now that since the vaccine is still not available, that there could be uh, some more delay before people start uh, working or getting back to what used to be the normal state. Um, what do you see about this virus? Virus vaccine, again, Pfizer said something that it might be there, it might not be there. India also thinks that by February, they'll be having something that uh, the entire population can get. What are your thoughts on this? And then we can move on to some other important topics. Right, so the Russia, China, uh, Russia, uh, vaccine, which they said, you know, they'll be the first, you know, washed away because the trials proved Eli Lilly and um, and uh, 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 Eli Lilly and this one more company, I forget it, just off my head. 
Right. Um, they kind of uh, wandered off uh, the, uh, uh, the the vaccine. The Pfizer has announced that it may be ready by end of the year or early uh, next year uh, with the vaccine. So the generally, Israel had only come up with faster test swabs, which determines whether you have virus, uh, virus symptoms. So there is a growing, uh, the second wave which the doctors had promised is upon us. Uh, you can see the spurts in parts of uh, Asia, but significant in Europe. And um, therefore, they're going from partial shutdowns to almost complete shutdowns. Australia had one state, albeit very small portion. And then in the United States, we have seen growth by about 5% uh, on, a, on, a, on a daily average basis, consistent with this issue. What's, the, what's my impression? My impression is that I believe that people will get used to working remote. It's going to take... Nobody can predict whether it'll be June, July, August next year, or whether it could be end of end of the year. But people have adapted themselves to this, and people have started to re return to work. At least in New York, um, there's a growing feeling that 35% or 40% of the people will be working remote, and they'll not be coming back to the offices for some for some period of time. I mean, not on the valley, but going to the other coast on the uh, on the west shores. Uh, Microsoft has said that people can work for life uh, remote from their homes. So you may see some dramatic changes, transformative changes occurring as a result of, of, of this, of the virus situation. Yes, indeed, there are changes coming along. Um, the next topic I want to talk about is Sweden's rejection of a couple of Chinese technologies, Huawei and ZTE, in the 5G trials that they were planning on running. So now Sweden is usually regarded as somebody who is uh, very socialistic minded. How do you, what do you make of it, sir? What other country would be doing the same thing now? Well, Sweden is also home to Ericsson, uh, you know, one of the largest, uh, you know, uh, mobile telephony networks and device companies. Now, of course, in the network business, the fact that uh, a country which has network to its credit rejects 5G and ZT is a reflection that security is a big concern. So they are following the pattern of every other country uh, that has gone down the path. I mean, this is where, again, the quad question comes in because the quad, the quad countries are come spearhead, spearheading an effort to come up with a set of common standards, uh, you know, in terms of building out the 5G, which is secure and away from uh, the Chinese Huawei technology. Again, I think Quad is going to be showing the way in that. And uh, sir, let's move on to economy. Uh, stimulus. Stimulus, any convergence, any idea which way it's going to be going? Well, I think it's a billion dollar question which way it is going. Um, you know, it depends on, you know, like New York weather, if I can just turn the computer or if you can see. It's, it's, it's cloudy, doomy, gloomy, dark sky, which rarely uh, is a rare event in, in New York. Um, but having said that, I mean, you have rains and so on, but it clears up and then you have clear skies. But very similar in terms of, uh, in terms of the stimulus. The stimulus is, uh, you may, it's like contradictory. We are close, but yet we are very far. You know, that seems to be the Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi and uh, Steve Mnuchin's decision. My feeling is that, as I mentioned yesterday, I have a feeling that uh, you know the, uh, the there will be some kind of limited passage of the bill um, that at least covers the airlines, uh, covers the SMEs, and covers the uh, the local government, medical schools, and so on. There will be some kind of an emergency package sometime this week, if if not the large package that both uh, Nancy and, uh, and and President Trump are trying to accomplish. Sir, is this becoming a poll issue? What is your gut feeling from the ground? I think it is becoming more than a poll issue. It's becoming a political issue, right? Because it's basically saying, you know, who is right and who is wrong, right? right. Um, the two point one trillion dollars was 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 received with great kind of fanfare and has seen economic outcomes come out of it, right? We have talked about that, you know, how quickly uh, that impacted and helped the economy to recover. Markets, uh, retail sales, consumer confidence unemployment, etc. So the story now is the continuity. So the continuity, does it require small or does it require a gigantic kind of a package? So to me, it is now, you know, who blinks is the, is, is the question, right? The who blinks is the question. 
So to your, to your point, is it political? The answer is yes. Is it polls related? Perhaps not. But it clearly is very political in, you know, between the two parties, which are very different in their policy. And now we take a look at our markets. Our markets have been yo-yoing up and down, up and down, up and down, based on the sentiment of when the market feels that the stimulus bill is passed. What do you see happening? The earnings season is upon us. A, a few more companies are now stating earnings. How do you see the market? I, I think the market will be, uh, you know, market will be neutral. You may not see, you will see the gyrations uh, driven by uh, sentiments. You know, it is stimulus is imminent, stimulus is not imminent. So you may see gyrations, but you may not see a significant, you know, contraction um, because the stimulus, is one thing is clear, stimulus is imminent, right? That the markets have determined. The question is how to time it and how to price it. But stimulus is imminent. Post-November 3, there will be stimulus, right? doesn't matter whether Democrats in power or whether Republicans in power. So as far as the 2021 outlook is concerned, is very well geared towards not only the stimulus addressing the economic outcome, but also potentially the coronavirus uh, betterment as a result of the vaccine, right? So you will see the, the, the stimulus part of it is only for the next kind of 10 days. But after that, you know, it'll, it'll be normalcy and the markets will see up. By the way, uh, October 29th, they will announce the third quarter, result, third quarter economic uh, GDP results is expected to be 30% plus. Whether by itself it'll have a bearing on the result, we don't know. But the story is that that's a very positive sign. That is why the contraction will come down from the minus 31.2 or 31.4 percent that we saw in the second quarter, being up by about 30 percent, and the year-end contraction to be around minus 5 percent. So a quick look at tech. Uh, we have about three minutes left in our show. Um, hmm. Antitrust. Uh, allegations against all the companies and now I'm hearing that Google uh, is first in the crosshairs there's a possibility and again this is uh, quoting some market uh, uh, experts that uh, Google might be broken up and so might uh, Facebook because people feel like the real value will be unearthed only when the components are themselves starting to trade what are your thoughts on this sir okay I think that the uh, that there are essentially two elements the antitrust is about the practices of Google, right? Then there is another element, which is which we discussed the uh, Article 230, right? Which is around the behavior of the tech platforms in terms of being political influencers or activists in a subtle way. So the antitrust we are talking about is, for example, should Google be imposing its preferred position on every iPhone and to be the default search engine? Uh, you know, that's a question whether that gives it the advantage. This has been the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the heart of the contention of many issues, but Google implants itself as a preferred kind of search engine or even, you know, uh, uh, a preferred tool and having default uh, search option point, pointing to Google. So the antitrust is about that part of it, right? So we've got to be very clear. As far as the breaking up of these businesses is concerned, that's more around the governance and regulation rather than, you know, a, a search engine company, um, a media company, um, an activist a news company, uh, and a collaborative arbitrator in engaging and making deterministic rules around the content. You know, very difficult when you have, you know, your vast array of assets which are, which are you know, uh, not holistically connected. That's the issue with Google. That's the issue with Facebook. That's the issue with uh, potentially, you know, uh, Amazon because Amazon has become. Amazon is very difficult to break because the reason is Amazon is a, like, you know, it's a retail link. It basically says, I don't manufacture I, anything you manufacture. I brand it and sell it. I've got superior kind of quality in my uh, customer engagement, customer preferences, customer behavior, logistics, execution, so on. Amazon is a different, difficult. It's a different and different and difficult animal. Whereas this Google, Facebook, Twitter, uh, you know, they are they are in a different kind of uh, caboodle uh, in this context. So you set me up nicely for the next question. Uh, a little bit of your thoughts on the Microsoft Tesla relationship to go up against Amazon. It's very uh, strange. The relationship itself was like, like a one liner, a couple of lines, which is to say Amazon and sorry, uh, Apple, uh, Microsoft and uh, Tesla will form a strategic relationship to take on 
the uh, the uh, the Amazon's cloud services platform. I mean, why you know, it's a satellite company. Tesla is a satellite company. The only thing that you can think of is that every Tesla car is going to be you know is tooled, right? And there's going to be vast if they're going to create a global infrastructure to manage all that kind of data and services, everything that they uh, tool and power these cars. Then obviously this they requires infrastructure and uh, software capabilities to deliver that. So whether the partnership is an enabler in making that and then taking that infrastructure to sell to other um, uh, you know other industries uh, remains to be seen. But it is very intriguing and interesting that two vastly different companies are coming together yeah. in uh, in tackling Amazon. Absolutely, and it's going to be very interesting to see what happens there. Thank you very much, Sridharji, and we'll be back tomorrow, same time, same news. Namaskaram. Namaskaram, and thank you, G. And have a wonderful day in the uh, United States, wonderful afternoon in Europe.